Good morning. It's Pastor Tucker with the New Testament Christian Church. Glad that you're able to join us this morning. We're very thankful. God's been good to us. This is Resurrection Sunday service, and we're so thankful to be able to worship a risen Savior. God's been good to us, and I really like to be just start off this morning by giving God all the praise and the glory. If you're this is your first time uh, on uh, service online with us, uh, why don't you please in the comments write what city you're from. Uh, right now, uh, as we get ready to go to the service, just take a moment and just write down uh, in the comments uh, what city you're from. We're glad that you're able to join us. We're very glad that you're able to be with us. And let's go ahead and open up in prayer. Father, we thank you right now, God, for your goodness. God, we thank you for this time that we can come and lift up your holy name. As we begin this church service this morning, God, we uh, uh, affirm, God, and proclaim that you are worthy to be praised. Lord, we thank you for your resurrection, God, how that you rose from the dead to appropriate our salvation. This morning, God, help us, God, with the wisdom and the, and the ability to just give you a, a worship and through your name, to lift up your holy name, God. I ask, God, that you bless each worker every time. And those, God, that are watching the service online, help them to be able to get in and worship and and receive from you. Lord, as we begin the service this morning, we want to just thank you right now. God, for being so good to us and watching over us and, and guiding us and protecting us. And we're thankful, God, that you're with us this morning. And we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're very glad for just the opportunity this morning. As we get to going in the service, I want each one of you to just join us. Now, I know it's hard to be able to worship God looking at your phone or looking at your a tablet or your desktop or however that you are seeing us this morning, but I want you to put aside everything else and right now bring your mind to church and let's just have a good time worshiping God. We have someone going to come up and sing for us, and so we're very glad for this opportunity that we can do just that. Let's give God praise this morning.
since we've been having to have church online, and I wanted to do something with the kids, and so I have a message we're going to be preaching in just a little while, so why don't you hold on, uh, and then we have some prayer reports we want to also do, and in the midst of all that's going on, I wanted to have some prayer reports, but I wanted to have something for the kids right now, and so I have somebody, hopefully, is coming uh, to sing for us this morning. All right, come on. You got this. actually going to do it. <laughs> All right. Amen. That's right. Have some faith. Um, got a couple that want to come this morning. Um, we've been praying. We've had a prayer line and prayer request ads going for a couple weeks now because we really believe that what's going to get us through this situation is the power of God and by prayer and by people spending time with God. I thank God for all the uh, first responders and the nurses and just the police. I believe they're doing uh, the best they can and we appreciate them and all those that are working in the hospital. I know uh, they're doing a, a, a wonderful job and we've been hearing about sacrifices that have been made. And I give all glory to those that are doing that job. But most importantly, I want to give all glory to God this morning. He's worthy of praise, and so I wanted to have a couple people come up and just give us some praise reports. Hey Amen. I want to thank God for allowing us to be in the presence this morning. I just want to thank him for all the work that he's done, you know, for all the things that he's been doing right now, all the stuff that's going on. God has truly been blessing. Uh, my brother-in-law over in Louisiana, he was sick with the coronavirus. And God blessed him. He is Amen. up. He's walking around. Amen. He's talking. Amen. He, he, you know, my wife, my, his wife, is, you know, my sister, she's, she was praying for him. And we were here at the church praying for him. Yes. And God yes. is still asking for prayer because God, that's what I said. Amen. He's still with us today. Amen. Uh, I want to thank God this morning for keeping the people around me safe and healthy. I want to thank him for working on his miracles. 
and I know he's gonna bless around the world. Amen. Thank you guys. Amen. All right, let's take a look at a couple of scriptures this morning. Looking at Genesis chapter 22. Uh, we've been looking at a series that I wanted to continue this morning. Again, very glad for those. In fact, again, as I was sharing as we opened the service, for those of you that are online right now, uh, please write down the city that you're at, uh, where, you, where you're watching from, uh, whether you're in Irving or Arlington or, or where. And then also we have different ones we're going to also join us. So at the end of the service, please want you to hang around. And at the end of the service, uh, we want to pray uh, here online this morning uh, for the various ones and what they're going through. Because, again, I believe that God can work everything out. And so if you would, please uh, put in your prayer request, your name, your prayer request. And those that are filled in the comments will let me know uh, your prayer request so that we can pray with you and pray for you at the end of the service. So uh, if you would, go ahead and write those on there for me. But I wanted to look at this morning, the book of Genesis, chapter 22, and we're going to start uh, looking at uh, verse 11. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do anything to him. For now I know thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, Behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns, and Abraham went and took the ram and offered him as a, for a burnt sacrifice in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said unto this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And I want to draw your attention to that uh, last portion. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, and the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. And I wanted to take a look at that again, looking at the series, A Ram in the Thicket. And this morning, I wanted to take a look at He Will See to It. Let's pray. Father, we thank you right now, God, for your goodness. And as God, we enter into our worship. And, and Lord, we're just really feeling your presence already on this Resurrection Sunday service. We are very thankful that you're here with us, that God, that you love us, that you guide us. And you are here with us, Lord God. Uh, I know sometimes it may seem somewhat different because we're doing this online. But wherever people are at and they believe in you, you're able to speak to their heart. You're able to bless them. And I ask God, bless in this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. How many of you that you're watching right now have ever received a gift that you questioned the gift or it wasn't exactly what you needed, uh, that wasn't probably even what you wanted? Maybe at Christmas time, maybe your dads can relate how that you got another tie uh, that you're planning to hang up in your closet and never wear. Uh, many times I hear uh, parents at Christmas time buying all these presents and buying huge uh, trucks for their kids and all kind of stuff. And uh, curious enough, the kids play with the box that the truck came in more than the truck itself. In other words, they begin to just have fun with the, the box and not the actual toy. Sometimes I've seen a friend, family or friends will buy something for somebody or get something for somebody because it's what they want or something that they think the person will like. It's not necessarily what the person wants and or needs. Now, we're not throwing stones at anybody. If somebody gets you a present or gets you something uh, thankful that they thought about you, and so not really throwing stones at anybody. But I really want to draw attention to this morning in the Word of God. We see a God that knows exactly what we have need of. When we pray to God and we ask God for a blessing, He knows exactly what we have need of. He's going to give you what not just what you uh, uh, something that's good for you, but He's going to exactly what you need. In fact, when we look at when the people of Israel were in the desert and they wanted some water, God allowed water to come from a rock. When uh, they were hungry, God allowed man to come from heaven. And there was even a time when Peter needed some money. Uh, Jesus directed him to go fishing, and there he caught a fish with money in his belt. I don't know what we're saying this morning is that God knows exactly what you're going through. God knows exactly where you're at, and God knows how to bless you. So this morning, I want to take a look at this morning. Abraham called it that place. He said, Jehovah Jireh. And I really want to look at this morning. God will see to it. No matter what you're going through this morning, 
I want you to join me in worship. Now, I know, again, this is a, a little different because you're not here in the seats in the sanctuary. You're at home in the living room, maybe in your car, maybe looking at it on the phone. But wherever you are, I want to get you to a place right now where you can put everything outside of your mind for just a little while and let's have church. Focus on God and how good he is because, you see, one of the things I need you to focus on is that God saw the need. Yes. God can see exactly what we're going through. Again, you that are watching online, Maybe you can begin to, to relate with this with me. How that as he, God began to look down Abraham, God saw something that he was pleased with. He saw that Abraham was obeying. He saw that as he told Abraham to offer up his son, his only son Isaac, how that Abraham did just that. He looked at the uh, faithfulness of Abraham. Uh, he saw the obedience, uh, and not only saw the obedience of Abraham, but he saw the attitude of Abraham. Yeah. God saw that there was going to be a need for an offering. He saw that Abraham was willing to get up that very next morning. As soon as God began to tell him to go into the mount, uh, to the land of Moriah and then go up to the certain mountain, Abraham made it a point to do just that. Woke up early in the morning and went that way. He saw the faithfulness of Abraham. Now, Abraham wasn't that perfect. And he had some problems. He had, he had made some mistakes in his life. But you see, what God saw that from that blessing was obedience, faithfulness. And I really believe this morning that God is still looking at our lives exact yeah. same ways. As we begin to say yes to God and no to the world, yeah. God is still able to bless. God will bless. God can see the need in people's lives. And God is still calling the people. He's still directing. He directed Abraham, turn from the direction that you're going. And I want you to go into the land of Moriah. I want you to go up to this mountain. He interrupted the very plans of Abraham. And Abraham said, yes, Lord. Yeah. Do you know that God is still blessing well, we are the persuasion and the mindset to say, yes, Lord. I'll go the direction you want me to go. I'll do what you want me to do. And as we begin to look at it, he's still calling us to walk in a certain direction. He, we, now, I know it may seem uh, unusual, but you know what? We still have to this day mountains that we must climb. There's still a direction that God wants us to go in. And so we just make it for our mind to do what thus saith the word of God. God is still blessing us. He's still calling. He's still able to work things out. Now, we're talking about a God that can bless you with exactly what you have needed. Now, unfortunately, there are those that do not want to walk in the direction that God wants them to go. There are those that uh, want to go their own way, uh, and they don't want to listen to God. They're, they feel like they can go and do better by doing what they want to do. Uh, in other words, they're rebellious, they're proud, disobedient. How many of you have uh, uh, ever raised a teenager? And had that teenager want to go the direction that he or she wanted to go, rather than the direction that the parent wanted you to go. They, maybe they were hanging around uh, all the wrong crowd. Uh, maybe they were involved themselves uh, and they're all the wrong situation. Uh, but you look up one day and this nice kid that uh, one time was a straight A student. Uh, but you look up one day and this student uh, that someone had uh, such an obedience uh, is not going in opposite direction than you want them to go. Maybe you've known somebody that has fallen in love with somebody uh, and begin to walk in a different direction than they were walking previously, uh, getting involved in all the wrong things and doing all the wrong things. Uh, and no matter how much you try to tell them, this is not the direction that you need to go, they keep going the way, same way they want to go. They make up their mind, I want to go this way. This is what God sees. Uh, there are those uh, that no matter what God is telling them, uh, how God directs them, uh, how God moves them in their life, they say no to God and they're going to go the direction they want to go. Yeah. But God saw something in Abraham's life. He saw obedience. Amen. He saw that no matter what happened, uh, that God would bless and God would move. Uh, and and he saw that there were those that looked out into the future and looked and saw us. Uh, there were those that would let, let down the pride and let down all their rebellion uh, and really just begin to get to a place where they would say yes to God. If you're watching me right now, why don't you just say yes, God? Yes, God. Let God begin to move in your heart and mind. In fact, if you're in the comments, uh, maybe somebody can write down in the comments, uh, yes, God. You see, at some point, you've got to say yes to self uh, and uh, uh, yes to God and no to self, rather, and literally let God begin to bless you. Because as we want to share with you this morning, there is a blessing still to those that will obey God. On this Resurrection Sunday service, he's still Jehovah Jireh. 
He's still the God that can provide. He's still the God that can make a way. And in fact, as we look at this morning, he will see to it. Now, there are those sometimes that are, are fighting. In fact, right now, this is a time that we need to come together. This is not a time to argue with each other. This is not a time to walk around mad, mad the president, mad the government, uh, uh, a different other government official, uh, uh, not mad at the uh, mad at your family, uh, uh, mad at the society, and all these things uh, that I'm seeing in the news, people angry. This is a time for us to come together and seek the face of God. Amen. To really to allow God to work on our heart and mind. And you see, if we begin to look at this, uh, uh, God can make a way. Now, I know uh, some were fussing uh, a while back uh, because their husband uh, wanted to make a man cave. I wonder how many of those ladies now that have stuck together the husbands uh, uh, for three or four weeks now wish they would have let him go ahead and make that man cave. Yes. How many uh, were fussing because uh, their wives wanted that, uh, that woman's shack? Uh, and how many right now wish after three or four weeks been stuck together, they'd go ahead and let her make her shack or whatever she wanted to get? People get to fussing sometimes. And at this point, we need to put aside all that fussing and begin to come together and realize that there is a God in heaven worthy to be praised. God is able to meet every need. God knows what's going on. And if you allow God to begin to willingly give yourself to God, he will see to it. He knows what you're going through. I need somebody right now to put in your comments, amen, because God will work everything out. CJ, uh, bring me that napkin with it for me, please. Now, another thing we want to take a look at this morning is that while the, going up to the mountain, thank you, while going up to the mountain, Isaac asked about an offering. He said, now, I can see the wood, I see the fire, but where is the offering? Abraham made a statement, he said, and they came to the place which they God told them of, and Abraham built an altar. And he began asking his son, God will make a way. God will provide himself a lamb. Yes, amen. He said, where is the lamb for the offering, Dad? And Abraham responded by letting him know that God would provide. Abraham began to set things up, and it said that he built an altar, laid the wood in order, bound Isaac his son, and laid them on the altar. You see, I can't imagine how this must have been for Abraham. This must have been uh, an extremely difficult task for him to do because when they began to have place, the altar wasn't there. And so they got to a certain point as they were going up the mountain and all of a sudden the Spirit of God began to let them know, this is the place. And so he had to uh, start building the offering. Can you imagine building the offering that he was going to put his son on? That was difficult. But you see, Abraham did it nonetheless. Now, he didn't even know why he was having to do this. Outside the fact that God just told him to offer up his son, his only son, even when he had to let go of Hagar and Ishmael, at least God told him how to become a great nation and kind of gave him some comfort and letting them go. But when he told him to offer up Isaac, he didn't give him that. All he says, offer up your son. And so Abraham began to do that. And as he was going through the motions uh, of uh, laying his son out, and Isaac willingly allowed his dad to lay him out, uh, and as he was getting ready to plunge the knife into him, uh, and a voice from heaven said, uh, Now I know you will be obedient. You will continue in your faith. And you know what? Because God saw that, God met that need. Can we say this morning he's still meeting the needs? Yeah. God can still work things out. God can still bless people. As you begin to look at it, he told them that he was gonna, God would provide a lamb. Now, God provided a situation and a solution for Abraham. But many years later, God still provided a lamb. In fact, John the Baptist, when he said, the next day John sees Jesus coming unto him. And behold, the lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. He provided a solution for Abraham, but he also provided a solution for us. He still in the soul saving business on this resurrection. Resurrection Sunday, we've got to get to the place where we realize God knows exactly what you're going through. And God can meet your needs. Amen. He met the need for Abraham's. He met the need, the need on Mount Calvary's. And you know what? God's still moving, meeting the needs here in the Irving's. Arlington, Grand Prairie, Dallas, and all around this area, all around our nation, he's still God. He's God. He always will be God. As you allow God to bless and to move, he can move in your life. You see, He'll see to it. Abraham said as he began to look around, he saw the ram in the thicket. He began to get excited. And he said, this place is Jehovah Jireh. This is a place where God saw to my need. If God can see to me, Abraham, God can see to your need also. He can see your sins. He can see your need. All the things you're going on in life. And God can work everything out. All God needs for somebody to say, God, come into my life. Right now, God, I need a miracle. If you are watching online, 
Start putting in what you need God to do in your life right now. Begin to send in the comments right now of what you need God to do in your life. Because God can still work things out. He can see your need for protection. He can see your need for joy. He can see your need for peace. God can see everything that you have need of. And God can meet that need. Now, Jehovah Jireh. It comes from uh, uh, the word uh, to see, and then really we use that and in combination with Jehovah as that God will see the need and God will provide. And so we've always looked at it in that light that God will provide, but it's also that he said that he will be known as having met the need. Not only will God see the need, not only will God meet that need, but he will be known for meeting that need. In fact, we know nobody can help you like God can help you. No one can do for you what God can do for you. And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. You see, when all the dust settles, when everything's all said and done, we're going to see there's a God in heaven that worked everything out. There's those right now that can look at their life and say, I was going down, I was going a certain direction, but God, he's still the same God. He's still working things out as we begin to give ourselves unto God. He made a way for Abraham. He made a way yes. for Abraham's. Yes. Abraham was in a very desperate state. He needed to, an offering. He didn't want to have to offer up his son Isaac. He had, was 100 years old when God told him that you're going to have a son. And he was looking forward to having a son. And now God says, you got to offer up that son. He needed a blessing. And when he needed that blessing the most, turn around, there's a ram in the thicket. How many of you need a ram in your thinking right now? I need my blessing, God. I need God to work things out in my life. You see, Jesus died on the cross for us, rose again on the third day, and he's able to substitute, and he took our place. We should have been on that cross. We should have gone to hell, but God took our place. He's still working things out for people, and right now, God knows who needs a healing in their body. Right now, God knows who needs a financial blessing. As you begin to just really let God talk to your heart right now. God it still moves. How many <laughs> need that ram in the thicket for their situations? You know, there's going to be a time, a couple years from now, we're going to be looking and people, somebody will be looking at or, or talking to their, their kids or, or maybe uh, talking with their friends uh, and say, you know, they're, during that time, uh, that was a rough time. Uh, all that shelter in place was going on. All the situation was going on. Uh, and, and I was in uh, looking at my phone. Uh, uh, there was a church service going on. Uh, and the preacher said, trust in Jesus uh, and bow your head uh, and accept him as Lord and Savior. Uh, and I did that uh, on my couch, uh, in my living room, uh, just looking at my phone. Uh, I looked at myself, I looked at the phone, uh, and the preacher said, trust in God. And I trusted in God. I see God come into my life. Take away my sin. And then you're going to be able to remember how that from that moment on, God took care of everything. He picked you up, turned you around, and God is going to be able to give all the glory. We're going to say, had God not moved, I don't know what I would have done. But thank God he's the God that can move and bless our life. You see, we learn to trust in God. He will be known as working out our situations. He will be seen as the one that provides he will be known as the one that can help us. And so as we look to God, we can share with everybody, he met the need of my life. We already heard from my brother. We were praying for him. His brother-in-law uh, was sick, but God healed his body. And I know the same God that heals his brother-in-law's body can touch your body also. Yes. God can work everything yes. out. You see, as we surrender our heart and mind, and maybe you've never thought about it before, maybe you were busy doing things, and now because of all the shelter in place, uh, maybe God's got you sitting down, so you were able to listen to us on the church service, and maybe you never thought you'd be able to do that, but for the first time, maybe you're able to hear the message of God. God, come into my life. God, take away my sin. God, make me a Christian. Yes. Maybe right now God is dealing with your heart. He's been telling you to get on this path for a long time. This is a path. Walk in it. But maybe you've been too busy doing this and that all over the place. But God has allowed things to happen to such a degree that you're able to hear us this morning. Right. And what you need is Jesus. Amen. He's given his heart and mind for us. When we needed that, when Abraham needed a lamb, God provided that ram and met that need then. But then years later, there was another lamb that was needed. And that was really the fulfillment of that prophecy. When John said, behold, the lamb of God, he's still meeting needs this morning. Yes. We're getting ready to pray. And then we're going to hopefully I'll be able to answer some prayer, uh, prayer with some people as they send in your prayer requests. Again, please put in your prayer requests. If you haven't had an opportunity uh, to give in your offering, Make sure that as they put out the uh, URL for the offering, please give in your offering, pay your tithe. Do right by God, and God will do right by you. Amen. But let me ask you this morning as we get ready to begin our prayer time, how many can say, I need a blessing? Yes. I 
the other blessings. We have prayer requests coming in and different ones and pray for me. But right now, right now, God is able to meet your need. He can put your family together. He can touch your heart, your mind. Maybe somebody through going all of these uh, in place and being in home, uh, you just need some peace. You're feeling like you're getting ready to explode. God gives you peace that passes all understandings. God can work everything out. He can see your situation. He can tell you how to work everything out. And if you just by faith right now call upon his name. You're going to see what God can do. There is a blessing for you, and God will see to it. Father, we thank you right now, God, for your goodness and your mercy. I ask, God, that you help us right now as we begin praying for the souls of, of, of those who ask for prayer and send in prayer requests. I ask, God, that you heal them, touch them, God, as only you can. I ask, God, that as we begin this time, that you touch our nation. Lord, in the midst of all this going on, I believe that you're able to help God and heal. I ask, God, that you rebuke this virus. I ask, God, that you touch us and the people that are going through the situation as they look to you, as they have faith in you. I ask, God, in the name of Jesus, deliver them, Lord God. Let them know they're not all by themselves. I know we're being socially distant, but God, we're still together as the people of God, creation of God, and we can call, call upon your name. And I know, God, that you're going to hear. I ask God right now, accomplish your divine will. We ask God that you uh, help those in Congress. I ask God that you help those in uh, the Senate. And I just pray, God, for uh, the president and those that are making decisions, uh, our governor and different ones in our local uh, uh, places of the government, to help them, God, to make the right decisions. Be with us, God, as we begin to go through this time. We need your hand upon us right now, God. We need your hand upon us. Uh, God, we need you, God, to help us as we go through our situations, uh, heal our body, touch our mind. And in the name of Jesus, we just glorify your name. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, begin, if you will, again, just put in your prayer requests, and uh, let's pray for some of these folks here. Tanya, she needs peace uh, between her and her oldest son. They keep fighting. All right. Father, we thank you for Tanya right now, God. We ask, Lord, that you uh, touch her and her family. I ask, God, that you help them to have peace in their family. God, you haven't called us to have to fuss and fight with our family, especially during the time right there, God. This is not a time to fuss and fight. This is a time that we draw together in love and unity. I ask God, in the name of Jesus, help her right now to have that peace. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Ms. Phyllis Robinson, she needs healing in her body. Ms. Phyllis Robinson needs healing. Father, we thank you right now, God, for your goodness. To by his stripes, we are healed. Help Ms. Robinson right now, God. Touch her body. Lord, we receive that blessing, God, that you're able to move and meet the need in her life. God, I don't know all that she has need of, but God, you do. You're right there with her. And I ask God that you heal her right now in Jesus' name. Amen. God's been good to us, and we appreciate all those that are, are with us this morning. Appreciate those that are uh, allowing God to touch them. And, and this week, we have uh, fellowships online. We have a Bible study online. We're not really sure how long this ordinance is going to go on, uh, but we are well able to give God praise and glory. I mentioned in my video that I sent out this week to different ones, stay engaged, still read your Bible, attend worship services, invite others to church, allow God to do work in your mind, and as you stay engaged in God, you're going to see God's able to take you all the way through this situation. I'm Pastor Tucker, New Testament Christian Church, and we are very glad uh, that you may be able to join us this morning. Hopefully you begin to join us this week. Send in any prayer requests that you may have. God bless you with our prayer.